and how do we produce it? So that, that was the question of the day. And I, I wanted to just start with the gas reservoir uh, itself. There's a the geology part, geoscience part of it, which I would love to go into, but because of time and because of uh, several factors, I was not able to finish the presentation. So I, I just focused on where I was told to uh, work on. Uh, basically, a gas reservoir, wherever you find the world, is, is a function of the function of temperature, pressure, and time. So they say a lot of in they say a lot of uh, geologists and geoscientists that the core can, can help me, uh, that many billions and billions and zillions of years ago, uh, there were dinosaurs and there were uh, fossil. I mean, we, we left some fossil deposits within the ground uh, due to uh, different microorganisms. A lot of things that are just science or theories which we cannot prove, but we can hypothesize that that's what really happened that formed, that was formed natural gas and oil and petroleum. So we have, is, as I said, the function of time, pressure and temperature. So in deep in the ground, so this is the depth in, in ground or underground water, either deep in the sea or anywhere under, underground in the crux of the earth. Uh, you have the coal zone, you have the oil zone, you have the gas zone. So, uh, the, this this uh, map here just shows you where the gas is more abundant than oil and then than coal, and it shows you the depths you need to get to get gas. So it is gas is is abundant, is difficult to manage because it's high pressure, high temperature. Uh, because I think this graph here didn't show the pressure. This this side here shows the pressure, and then the temperature expression is downwards, uh, and the depth. So gas is really, really uh, something that you need to, it's, it's a hidden treasure. Um, so that real type of gas, when it comes, when you, when you're trying to, so you can categorize it in several forms. You have, um, I, this, is, I, this here is simple, but actually it's based on a different type of reservoir. So I will say types of gas, or characteristics of gas, you can say you have a conventional gas, which is conventional as treated or known as treated gas, right? You have the coal bed methane, uh, which is really a surface, right? You have the tight and rich uh, and gas rich shale gas, which is unconventional gas, right? Uh, and then I'll, lastly, that is not written here, is the hydrate, uh, which is a research item that I will say go and look at and study further. But I like said there are four four major types of gas, basically. Um, here, here they put three. I put three here, condensate wet gas and dry gas. This is when it has come out of the reservoir. There's another condensate gas, wet gas, or dry gas. And I'll explain this, what we call the phase diagram later on. Because everything about the thermodynamics of, 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 uh, of, of natural gas is based on this phase diagram. And you can design everything you want around this phase diagram. But I'll come again, type of, type of gas reservoirs. You have, you have the conventional, you have the non conventional, you have the coal bed methane, you have the, uh, uh, I said the conventional, non conventional, the coal bed methane, and then the gas hydrates. So those are places you can get gas from. Gas hydrates, as I said, and I repeat again, is the future. It's long, it's everybody's trying to resolve whether people are scared that we extract hydrate gas because it will cost the end of the world. Um, so, um, I want to production. Are you hearing me? Is, is everything okay? Uh, yes, we can, sir. Everything is fine. Oh, beautiful. Because I'm hearing some twitches and noises at the background. Um, that's production. Someone will say that if I put production, why did I just put a simple block diagram? to show production. Um, of course, if I develop the slides for that, I would, uh, I would put more flesh to it, but I just want to make something simple uh, that everything starts from exploration, which is about, give or take two years. You explore, do your seismic, you throw sounds in the ground. There are a lot of technologies to, to actually detect uh, through your seismic how, what's the gas bearings of what, and all you can study that further. Uh, um, it's more in the geosciences aspect of things that I didn't talk about today. 
I'm, I'm really I'm not a geoscientist, I'm, I'm an engineer. And so I, I, this presentation actually focuses on gas engineering. Uh, but it was good to have, so I mean, I believe this, this presentation is not complete without uh, really looking at the geosciences aspect. It's, my geosciences friends are, 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 are very important. Without them, we cannot, they are not even doing anything. So they look for the gas, it takes about zero to two years. And they move to the appraisal phase where you start doing drilling. And I want to say that for chemical engineers, we are involved in almost every phase of this production uh, uh, scheme. Uh, many chemical engineers are not in the exploration a bit. I think there's more precision engineers, uh, geoscience and geologists, and geophysicists. But when it comes from the appraisal phase, all the way to abandonment, engineers are, are, are kicking. These are more the scientists here, physics, science, this is more science, and this entire spectrum here is engineering. Uh, so you do appraisal for two to five years. You do what you call the define and design and design. So you, you have to do a concept select in different systems, different companies have what they call this phase of the, of the production uh, or phase of projects. So this, this is more of a project and production map, I would say. And once you have designed, you have defined, you, pro, you construct, and then you start producing. So you can produce, you can produce more than 40 years, or actually just 10 to 40 years, because it's typical. I put 30, about 30 years here, because it's typical of when and gas facilities, even LNG plants. But we've seen refineries that fit up to 60 years, up to 70 years. And uh, today, LNG plants can even do more. Uh, uh, so, and when you're producing gas, you can either produce gas for uh, LNG, so I'll go into that, that's how you, how you produce and how you utilize that. When you're done with that, you have to decommission, of course, and abandon at the end of the life of the, of the field. Um, so this, this shows both upstream, so I, I move to the next part, which talk about the engineering, so that we can get a picture of what I'm, I'm talking about, I don't get you lost. Uh, process, so I, I go into the engineering, which is more process separation and and, uh, and, and conditioning. So through that entire picture I showed earlier, uh, uh, we're trying to achieve a goal. Uh, 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 we're, trying, uh, we're trying to achieve a goal. And this is, when you find gas, what do you do with it? In the past, in many years ago, most people were looking for oil. Actually, Baba Makoli told me that because he worked with Shell um, and he, well, he felt was too before he came, he came back to lecturing, which is very good. When you, when you have both industry and academia, you are, you are, you are just, I mean, the sky is the limit. No, I mean, sky is the no limit these days. You are, you are moving, you, are, you, you saw, you go very high, very far, because you can combine both academia and practical things. Uh, you walk with Shell and you realize that in Nigeria, everywhere they went to then, they were looking for oil, but they found gas. So it was a big problem because gas, you don't know what to do with it. They couldn't store it. They couldn't. So it's, 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 and that's the question here. It says, what do you do with gas? By the way, this, this is a, uh, a, a training that I got from Shell Global Solutions. I believe one thing, uh, to be frank with anybody, if you're talking about natural gas, you cannot do natural gas in Nigeria without talking about Shell. Because they, it was like the farmland was just given to them. So I want to acknowledge the tutelage of Shell even in my own life, I did my intention with Shell. Uh, and I, I, I'm, I'm a privilege of, I'm a product and privilege of, of Shell today. Though I work with different companies, I can sit today. Um, but we are all one. We are all, we are all one. And what do we do with gas? So this map, I love it. I call it the natural gas vehicle map. How do you, when you find gas, what do you do with it? So you can either turn the electricity to chemicals, GTL on here says it means gas to liquids. So you can turn it to other liquids. You can transport it by pipeline or transport it by LNG. So there's, and this map here shows based on the distance and the quantity. In fact, actually, you can design entire system on the right hand side of upstream, mission, and downstream based on this map. That's why I like the map. You, you, can, you can, if I find that that is less than 10 million score, for instance, and I have to use it. Uh, very close to me. I just turn into electricity. 
you know, why, why do I waste my time transporting the pipeline or LNG? Or why, why am I wasting my time doing that? Just me, and that's what, so, okay, so, so the, some engineers, are, I mean, the problem with our country today in Nigeria is that people don't understand this map. That, to me, that's really the bottom line. People don't understand this map, this vehicular map. If, if we understand it, we'll know where, where to site our facilities, what to do with our gas. It's a big question. And it's a big debate that we can always have. But I'll leave it today. So gas, when you get it from the, the processing, when you get it from the wells, the subsurface, separate it. This is the upstream industry. This is all the Shell, Totals, uh, e &I, um, Exomobil, this is the domain, right? So that's what we call the upstream today. That's what we call gas, the EIA refers as gas production, this, this section here, right? And then you move to the transmission. Uh, another, another use here can be the gas processing plant. So here you can actually remove do the separation. You can allow the hydrogen, sorry, hydrogen, nitrogen, H2S, H2S is hydrogen, hydrogen sulfide, which is poisonous gas. You can return it to the field or you can vent or flare the gas. So this is a processing plant here, which we actually added, actually, it's in, in between either, you don't know whether it's mid upstream or midstream. But this is where all of the LNG plants for uh, for uh, uh, LNG plants and LNG falls within this, we call it the midstream now uh, sector. And uh, the, the GTL falls within this sector. The pipelines actually fall within this sector to its midstream actually. Uh, so in, why do we do why do we do so that's why it's here? It's you are trying what you're trying to do is try to convey the gas. I'm trying to convey the gas to the market. So that, that's really what we are trying to do. We are getting it from the ground, the resource, getting them it as molecules, and then you want to convey it. And one way to convey it or drive it. Is either by through electricity or through molecular format. Molecular format is when you, you for through electricity, you just turn into electricity and power, power nations, power, power buildings, power, power, bring light. And once you bring light, everything forms. You know, when there's light, darkness disappears and things form. You know, and, 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 that, and that's really it. Um, that's what gas can do. That's the power of gas. It, natural gas also can, is used in a, for consumers in homes for heating. I mean, it's it's enormous. I, I can't if I go if I if I if I stay stay with that. I, I will I will just spend the whole time today. I'm looking at my time now because I won't spend just 20 minutes on, on this. So we can follow this also ask questions around this point uh, if if need be. So we're going to the technologies of gas conditioning and refining. Uh, re refining is all about. Look, you can see the molecules here. I got this from the GPSA. Well, by the way, that's a powerful book. Uh, it's a manual uh, that shows that shows how you process. How, I call it gas conditioning. And people don't know that there's also what we call gas. Like you have oil refinery. You have what we call gas refinery. Uh, it's, it's actually separating all these molecules into one um, into one, I mean, this component of that of, of gas, of natural gas. Or of gas basically into its its constituents, you know, CO2 from removing CO2, removing H2S, removing nitrogen, uh, removing the C1, that's the carbon one, that's the methane, ethane, you know. So sorry, just a minute. Um, so so really that's 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 really about changing the the, the, the components, removing removing the components and refining the, the components. Sorry, I'll just pause here. Uh, I'll just pause here, to take a breath. I don't know if you are following. Hello. Hello. Yep. How many we are you following, sir. We are following you, sir, and uh, we are with you. Okay, how many minutes do I have? Uh, so I still have about uh, five to ten more minutes. Beautiful. So I'll try to wrap, wrap up. Well, I know this slide is very busy, but I, I just wanted to, to tell you that natural gas conditioning is a complex process. 
people, people are scared. I'm like you, they are really scared of gas. Oil is very easy to handle, but refining oil is difficult. Same as refining gas, very difficult, uh, very difficult, uh, uh, I'll say complex plants uh, process to, 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 to achieve that goal of removing all these uh, components into their individual streams, you know, so you can really stable after this, uh, this by the way, it's being recorded, so the recording and the presentation, I'll make it available, so I can go into more details. I'm just giving pictures, so it just tells in you a desire to know more, a curiosity on natural gas. Um, so we have different refinery methods. We have got what we call the John Thompson valve. These are technologies that are used to condition and refine, refine uh, gas. Uh, you can go through the total compressors. Uh, uh, there's a lot of techniques. In fact, this already is a, is a, is a, is a three-day training on John Thompson, which is the simplest of all methods of refrigeration and refining. Uh, so you can, I'm going, like if, I, if I go in, in this order, it's, it's more uh, um, order of complexity from the concrete to stone compressors to what goes supersonic gas separation. Uh, supersonic gas separation using supersonic speed without having all these mechanical engineering parts, mechanical parts of compressors, pumps, valves, valves are static equipment, pumps are compressors are mechanical equipment. While twister, which is a different level on its own, is for use for sonic. So you're not having all these parts. So you're not maintaining, doing a lot of maintenance. With all the twister, yeah, it's uh, I was privileged to, to be involved in installation, installation of the twister units in when we're doing the uh, pilot testing in the Torugu gas plant in uh, in Wari area, uh, Delta State, sorry, uh, Nigeria. So I, I was highly privileged to be part of that. Uh, pioneering uh, uh, design of the twister gas conditioning uh, technique. It's not widely used, but it's a very, very advanced way of separating gas. I talked about the phrase and we look, I, I can go deep into this, but it's, I can say it's a, it's a five day lecture on just on this, because you can design entire systems, gas systems based on this, working around what you call the, the Kikunen term, the Kikunen bar, the dense phase, you know, you, you can you can go into a, a wall on your of, of it on its own. So basically, this is a simple refrigeration uh, unit. Uh, you can check this encyclopedia, the age encyclopedia to come to get more details. Uh, I, I like the picture because it's very simple and straightforward. But when when we started brainstorm to how do you now get the gas to liquids, people started thinking of doing smart ways, and this is the complex LNG plant you see today. That we are, we are all, uh, uh, and I work for very complex, very complex, but uh, interesting. It's, it's fascinating. It's uh, I call the energy plants the cream. You know, it's it's the it's if you're, if you're in the energy world, you're you are, you're in a, you're in, a, you're in the best part of of gas refining. It's 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 when you when you're releasing cold energy and using cold energy to cold utilities to achieve liquefaction. It's really the, the, the cream of the industry. Um, I'll, I'll just conclude, because I have a few minutes and I don't want to bore you. I'll, I'll just conclude with the future. When I say the future is cold energy. When I mean by cold energy, is hydrogen. Gas, or I call hydrogen the, the fuel for the day after tomorrow, right? So, to, the, the fuel for today is gas. Maybe tomorrow, you say renewables, solar, wind, but the day after tomorrow is hydrogen. And I mean, I'm privileged to give this lecture on the day when we, we, we celebrate, we call it the National Day of Hydrogen. And that's 8th, 10th of, sorry, 8th of October. Every 8th of October is the National Day of Hydrogen is celebrated, in, I think, in the US. And I hope it's going to be international. Uh, and hydrogen is abundant and you can get it through gas. I know, I mean, I'll give it, maybe in the future, I'll give a separate lecture on hydrogen. The colors, you know, the, the beauty of hydrogen. So I want to conclude with this: that as students, think of the future. Don't think of think of your after sixty four years, when natural gas is almost finished. You know, what do we do next? Hydrogen is, and I call hydrogen the, the bridge towards a sustainable and future and a net zero future that we all desire, where we don't pollute 
hydrogen is that bridge. So I want to conclude there and thank everyone with the beautiful picture of my family. Uh, and I love them so much. They are the ones that made me do and uh, give me give me this opportunity. Actually, without them, I'm not able to give this presentation today. Thank you. Back to you. All right. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, and, oh, this is a lovely picture <laughs> to end this uh, lecture. Uh, we are grateful. That, um, right now, uh, we'll be taking uh, questions and feedbacks um, from everyone. So this is the Q and A session now. So if you have um, questions, please um, drop them in the chat box. Uh, we will attend to every one of them. Uh, okay. So so. Um, while people are dropping their questions, I would like to ask, uh, so what is the role of NLNGs in Nigeria today? Um, do, what is the role of NLNG in Nigeria today to curb uh, gas flaring? And what is their role in making sure that gas is being utilized for um, things like um, generation of electricity uh, to power the um, national grid, if that is uh, possible? Uh, you are muted, sir. All right, thank you. Sorry, I didn't know that. So you're yeah, giving the question as a very good leader. Um, um, it's a very good question. What's LNG doing? To come, without LNG, it would have been flaring volumes. I, I don't have the numbers today, but I think it's thank you, but I will put it on my slide to actually showcase what LNG is doing. That, seriously, I'm not, not I'm supporting or branding or anything more. Without LNG, we would have been flaring more than what we are doing, uh, doing today. Doing today. I'll, I'll show you a slide uh, that shows what LNG is doing to reduce gas flaring in Nigeria. And I think we should even take credit, as an LNG, to take credit for it, because we are really supporting the SDG goals of UN. And other things for gas to power. Actually, I live on Bonnie Island, and I tell you, light does not blink in Bonnie. It doesn't, it doesn't mean that all of you should come to Bonio and come and set up your business. But I'm telling you, LNG, LNG powers Bonio through the turbines and the gas. And if LNG can power Bonio, I believe that the, the gas we are selling also, we are powering communities. You know, you, you don't, you, many of you don't know that LNG was one that made the price of LPG crash at some point before we started having challenges. Actually, the problem with LPG in Nigeria, that's cooking gas, the price is because our, we only have few ports. Uh, the, everything goes through Lagos, which should not be. We should have more places to import uh, LPG because we only can transport it through ships from NLNG. So I tell you, NLNG is doing a whole lot. I mean, the value, uh, and I can't qualify. I'm so proud to be working for this great organization called NLNG. Uh, because we are really making it better than Nigeria. Back to you. All right. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir, for that answer. And uh, I think that that sounds. I hope I answered you. I hope I answered the question. I was only political motivated answer. Well, yes, yes. Uh, the answer would just you know prompt me to say you know be a part of an LNG and see how um, they use the. Right. As many as as many as can pass the interview, <laughs> you're welcome. All right. Thank you so much, sir. Um, there is a question here. So someone is asking, um, what are some of the refined products and specific uses of natural gas? Okay. So refined products of natural. So you have methane, which is your C one, carbon one. Okay. So methane. So uh, uh, um. Methane is exactly used to burn, uh, burn, you burn turbine, burn gas, natural gas, and you see methane in turbines to give you power. Um, with air, natural gas, you create fire, you create a, a spark uh, that, uh, that creates the turbines to turn the rotor and then can produce electricity. So there's a process that natural gas helps to. So that's one. Chemicals, all your plastics today are from gas natural gas. So that's the ethane part of it. You can form ethylene, you can form propylene, you can, 
a lot of things. Propane, you're cooking gas. So in fact, we are living, we are, our, our civilization is based on gas and the, uh, the gas economy or the gas ecosystem. Um, and what else? Solids, a lot of things. Uh, fertilizers, um, which you help your food. So there's so many things that, I mean, we, I can show a slide that, it, that, that shows all, in fact, it's a complex web of a myriad of things that natural gas produces and gives to humanity. So I don't know that answer. I keep it very high level, so I don't know to a lot of details. But natural gas can do several. I've given you just about four four items that affect your everyday life: your food, your your, your plastic, your shelter, your clothing, your 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 everything. Aluminium for power, a lot of things, a lot of things. You know, so I'll just keep it there. Uh, natural gas can be used for several. It, it's an input. And in the future, the input, the product is an input for hydrogen, which is the green economy we are all looking for. Hydrogen is, is just removing. Okay, so how does the hydrogen work? CH4 is my thing, right? So you have four uh, carbon and uh, four hydrogen uh, atoms with, with one carbon. So by the time you break H, CH, break the H out of it, that's hydrogen. And then you convert, if you burn that in a combustion engine. It just forms water as a byproduct. So you put oxygen, so you draw H, put your O, H2O. So the byproduct itself, CO2, will be H2O, which is water, which water is water is life. Water only, uh, as I say, water only, how do you say it? You don't get any me, you know? So it's, it's water is life, you know, and we need it. And that's what hydrogen is the byproduct of hydrogen. So natural gas is a, is a source for hydrogen, is a, one of the sources. So, so many things. Thank you. All right. Um, thank you so much. Sir. And we have a lot of questions that I hope uh, you will enjoy answering uh, all of them, sir. Uh, yes. So this one here says, um, can you speak more on the LN LNG train seven and what sort of economic um, impact can we expect when it is completed? OK, so I will limit my, 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 because I'm not, I, I, I can't divulge much information about the, the current status of the project, but I'll tell you the impact. So someone is going to bring 10,000 jobs to Bonnie Island alone. That's what 10,000 people will be, will, be, will be fed through to the train seven. Train seven is, a, is in fact, is the only national project. They're not having a lot of investment, unfortunately, in Nigeria at the moment, but train seven will bring, and I said, will bring jobs it will increase the capacity, Nigeria's export capacity. Um, and there are other enablers of Train 7 as a project, community-wise, uh, social-wise, there are other social, government and uh, governmental and environmental uh, things we are doing as, as, a, as a project to ensure that it's sustainable. Uh, it leads to sustainable development of humans, of things around, around it. Um, so, Trade 7 is really making a good impact. Uh, we are actually currently, we have, a, we have about 3,000 people working on the project. Uh, just talking about welders, artisans, to engineers. Uh, and you have a lot of people in the upstream trying to get us the gas. So, you have your scientists, you have HR, you have everybody on hand on deck to which your Trade 7 flies and is soaring. So, the project is really doing well. Uh, we are we are, we, are, we, are, we, are, we are hoping that by um, 2026, 2027, we are able to, to put in uh, LNG into the market. Uh, for actually, actually, from 2025, able to put in LNG into the market and make sure that the impact is really felt worldwide. And a lot of people are looking for gas. The Russia Ukraine war is making people turn to Africa now for, for gas. And Africa is a school of gas. And then, where, 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 what time can be best for us as a country and as a people to uh, to, to 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 showcase to the world that Nigeria will carry last? You know that we can we can feed the world through natural gas, and that's what Trinidad is going to do. It's going to expand. It's the only, it's the only energy plant in Nigeria. You had normally you had brass or local, it died a natural death, 
uh, but Nigeria LNG is the only LNG export facility in, the, in, in Nigeria. So its impact is huge. Uh, thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, I hope that um, answered your question to the person that asked. Um, I hope you answered this question. I'm not going to discuss answer. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, sir, there is um, another one. So this one says, uh, with the whole idea of gas as the new energy and the abundance of gas in Nigeria, we even um, export to other countries. Why is gas still very, very expensive in Nigeria? Very good question. So when you say gas expensive, I'm telling you, you're talking about domestic gas, that's LPG, right? As I said, the ports, we need more ports. We need Calabar to open up. We need Badagri to open up. We need Pokakot to open up. We need all the coastal regions to have ports to import LPG, right? Then it's going to be distributed to the entire country, the north. There's a good study done by PwC or KPMG, I can't remember. On LPG, please Google it or look for it on penetration of LPG in Nigeria, right? Well, it has to start in the coastal region because give it a, let's, let's, let's be frank with ourselves. Nigeria Delta is rich and Nigeria Delta is where those deposits are. So, I mean, trying to build pipelines or things that, I mean, it's better we connect the potential on the coastal regions to penetrate into the northern part of the nation and then fill the entire country with LPG. And that's right. There was a time it crashed 3,000 naira per, per, per bottle, per 10.5 10 kilogram uh, uh, bottle because of LNGs. Or LNG actually supplied all its, all its uh, LPG that it produces to the domestic markets. Now why they're not producing a lot is because there's a problem in gas upstream. Our gas, are, our pipelines are being vandalized, so gas is not entering into the plant. And if gas doesn't enter the plant, you cannot send, uh, you cannot send, uh, you cannot produce LPGs that, that will now better our lives and everything that. So I'll say the key is that the government really needs to we need infrastructure. We need to not rely on Lagos alone. Tinkan Island is too congested. We need to diversify. That's that's my solution, that's my personal view. Uh, thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much, sir. Um, I think now we'll um, stop taking questions just because of time, but I'll read uh, the remaining we have here, sir. Okay. Uh, read, so that, I'll, I'll, I'll pick out the one I think really is. Please, you got, you just permit me if I think I need to address anyone. Don't read about the question, and I can give an answer to all of them after the meeting. Okay, sir, I'll do that, sir. Okay, here is from Ola. Hello, engineer Akinlabi. My name is Ola, joining from London. My question is around the fact that you mentioned hydrogen gas as the future. As the future, in gas conditioning, what is the proportion of hydrogen to other constituent gas, and what can be the use of other gases? Okay, go uh, ahead. I'll see. What, I'll see. I'll see which one. Yeah. I mean, I may need to give more details. So go ahead. Okay, here we have a one from Ola Lekeluwashi. It says, please, is there any economic and environmental disadvantage of natural gas? Okay. Yes, yeah, sir. And yeah, that is also. Good. Uh, those are very, so let me take them. Let me just take them. Uh, I'll start with the environmental one because I'm, I'm, I'm a strong advocate for, protect, for climate change and protecting the environment. Uh, uh, I believe our uh, activities as oil and gas I mean, we need to be responsible. We need to be responsible. We can't be producing, we can't be flaring anyhow. It's, in fact, these days, the Norwegians have developed technology so that you don't need flare. Flaring is necessary, but the Norwegians have helped us find a way so that we can recycle the gas in through good certification and good technologies so that we don't, we don't want methane. But, but generally, environmentally, and those are the downsides of methane. Methane is the, has the highest gas forming potential. It's, that's the disadvantage of methane, you know, natural gas. It has the highest, highest uh, environment. I mean, it's, it, if you really if you drench methane, methane, my God, you are, you, are, you are causing a colossal destruction to the ozone layer. Um, so that's, that's really, and the, the economical disadvantage, people say there's a cost of, of hydrocarbons. Most of the economic countries are the ones that are poor. 
it was people who agreed to breed, you know, this is a lot of societal and societal vices, in terms of people who get greedy, you know, and things like that. So uh, those are my take, that's my take on saying the downsides of uh, natural gas. But it has, if properly managed and handled, it has enormous benefits. So the benefits outweigh these few, very few uh, um, disadvantages of natural gas. Um, on gas and hydrogen, thank you for that question because that's the future, as I said. Uh, um, I think your question was around what part of um, hydrogen. Can you repeat the question so I can get, get it properly and I can address it very well? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It says, what is the proportion of hydrogen to other constituent gas and what can be the use of other gases? So beautiful question. So I said, for instance, hydrogen, CH4 for methane. If you want to get blue hydrogen, uh, or let's, let's start from the gray. Gray hydrogen is, so I showed this in my slide, I showed the constituents. So I'll just share it. Sorry, please let me, if you don't, if you don't mind, let me just, Go back to this. That's, I like this slide. This is my actually my favorite slide. Can you see my screen? Yes, you can see your screen. Yes, sir. Oh, yes. Okay, can you see my screen? Yes, sir. We can see it. So, I, I normally like to show the carbon, the, uh, the atom. So, hydrogen can be got, obtained anywhere you see uh, methane here is CH4. Starts with C1, H4, CH4. It then is C2, H, I think that's H, H6, if I'm correct. Um, and then you have propane, C3, H8, uh, like that, like that. So um, C1, so let's start with methane. We make some, as I said before, you have CH4. So you have four hydrogen atoms bound to one carbon atom. So for green, for blue hydrogen, which is obtained from natural gas, you extract the C from the H, and you have four hydrogen atoms. And then from there, that's considered as a carrier, four hydrogen atoms. You are now born hydrogen, which if you're born hydrogen, you're putting air. H plus O2, as I said previously, gives you H2O as a byproduct, and you have hydrogen as a carrier. So it's, a, it's an entire economy on its own. You know what I mean? So the carbon that, is, that you have on the CH4, what you now do to get it as blue hydrogen is when you sequester that carbon or some CO2 and all the carbons back into the ground. They call it that blue hydrogen. Green hydrogen is when you have electricity forming the hydrogen as you have from electrolytes. So you have an electrolyte. So I can give you an entire lecture on hydrogen. I won't go into that today, but just know that hydrogen is the future if you if you want to really have a, you say renewables, renewables actually can produce hydrogen, what is called green hydrogen. And from that green hydrogen, you can form a different ecosystem, whereby you have no hydrogen, no fossil fuels, right? You have pink hydrogen from nuclear, you have white hydrogen from waste, you have turquoise hydrogen from pyrolysis. So you have several. I'll stop it there. All right, thank you so much, sir. We are really grateful. This has been indeed a very wonderful lecture. And for me personally, I enjoyed every part of it. Uh, thank you so much, sir. Uh, please let's show our appreciation to um, engineer Charles um, in the comment section. Please let's um, give him a round of applause. So let's just react to um, his lecture. Um, so so uh, going forward, we would have a little um, quiz um, session just to uh, engage everybody and from there on we would have a little bit of networking where um, we would like um, our yeah we would like members here to connect with you on LinkedIn if you have, have questions and networking okay. all right sorry about that um so thank you very much, sir. Thank you everyone for your appreciation. I uh, really appreciate this. Um, peace, if you could, um, yeah, if you could go ahead, um, kindly share your screen and kickstart the quiz session. All right, Ife. Thanks so much once again, sir. So uh, quickly we'll go to the quiz session, right? So 
it's just something for us to play with and just to be sure we learn something from today's session. So uh, once the question pops up, first person to reply wins. So I'm going to be sharing four questions, just simple stuff. So just drop it in the chat, right? And let's see, let's see if we gain something today. All right, here we go. This is the first one. So, uh, so let's see. Who is going to answer first? This is interesting. I can remember this um, on one of the slides um, Engineer Charles shared. So this should be easy. Yeah, very easy, very easy. Okay, I guess we have a winner. No, I don't think so. No, no. I don't think so. Wow. So nobody, nobody is going to win this one. One minute more. Uh, <laughs> uh, let's. This is three natural gas components, not uh, types. Types. Yes. Yeah. No types based on the uh, phase diagram. Wow. Well, we all right, so I guess we have to move on so we don't take our time. So, uh, so the yeah, yeah, the answer for this is you have the Drew Thompson valve, you have the turbo compressor, no. and you have the... no, no, um, you said okay. components. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Okay, if you can go ahead. Okay, yeah, so for uh, okay, okay, yeah, someone, someone has dropped something, yeah, someone, someone just answered, yeah. Yeah, that's that's good. Okay. I'm not seeing, I'm not seeing the answer. Just in the chat. The components. You're talking of either carbon, um, ethane, yes, methane, C2. IG2S, yes. CO2, nitrogen. Those are many components that consist yes. in natural gas com composition. But I think so. We can take um liquefied natural gas, even though yes, that's okay, LNG, okay, CNG, but they're yeah. not components, they actually type yeah, of Yes, some components of the natural gas, they yeah. are vehicles by which you can convey uh, no. gas, natural gas. So when you look at natural gas, it's a transportation vehicle, right, into liquids so that you can transport it for a long distance. You say CNG is is a vehicle to be able to move it from one part to another. The transportation um, is a vehicle, okay. right? <laughs> so please, yeah. you have to know your answer. <laughs> no, I actually, I actually made a mistake reading it out, but either way, I guess it's all fine. We are, we are all in. So, yes. Uh, nobody, yeah. nobody got that one, right? So, I, so I think I'm asking that question so, so that so that people can learn and yeah. learn. Exactly, sir. Exactly, sir. Thanks so much for making the clarification. I actually wanted to type uh, the instrument, so I guess uh, when I was oh, instrument, I'm saying instrument of or uh, technologies. Fine. Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah. That was, right. that was what happened, but I guess it's good to be clarified this. So it's another way to learn. So let me go to the next one. Uh, I guess this one should be very easy. This one is very easy. So fastest finger, first uh, prize. Have, your slide, uh, I can still see the same question. I don't think I'm the only one. Okay. Let me share it again. Okay, let me let me stop sharing and share again. So okay, out of now. Okay, uh yes. Okay, so I guess this one is very easy. Very easy. So let's okay. see who gets this first. So because uh six is a lot, uh I think six or seven is a lot. I think we can accept three or four. Yeah, let's just see. Let's see who is the fastest. Just two minutes, at least. That's how they work to be. Got three. Should we give her? I guess, Mr. President, once you have a winner, just fix someone. So I would have loved it if you dropped the six, but I okay. think I'll. 
uh, someone just dropped five. So I think five okay. trumps uh, everyone. Okay. To right, so, so the, the six stages you have are exploration, appraisal, define and design, construct, produce, yes. then, then the commission, then you go to abandon, right? So we already have a winner. So let's go to the third one quickly. So uh, let me just drop a message for Ife after the call and let's see what Ife has for us. So let me go to the third one. Uh, All right, four characteristics of natural gas. That was one of my, my first set of slides. Yes, your first slides were <laughs> very easy, very easy. <laughs> you should be able to drop this for. No, don't give us two, don't give us two. You want the four. <laughs> if we are doing, are doing well, there are other many characteristics of what these are just four. Woo, yes, Ikechuku, yes. Correct. Uh, we have, yeah, from Ikechuku. Okay. So Ikechuku, yeah. is our, Ikechuku is our second winner. Uh, yeah, so let me go to the final question. This one is too easy. I don't know that I should ask it, but this is a bonus. <laughs> Let's just drop it. Let's just drop it. So. Uh, so, okay, so I'll just add a little add on. So, if you're listing the types of gas here, you have to drop the um, characteristics to which you are um, classifying them as types of gas. So, okay. is it by you know, face behavior or their. Uh, um, let's just keep it simple face behavior. Someone has one Bolaji already got in. Okay, so let's just give it to Bolaji. So. I guess we all enjoyed it. So that is all we have from you, right? So the winners would uh, get back to Ife. Yeah, so if I guess you can round up the session. Thanks right. so much. Uh, well, personally, I really enjoyed like every part of this, especially this quiz session. It was really, really fun. Uh, an opportunity to learn and unlearn. So uh, do you have um, comments for us, uh, Engineer Charles? Well, I want to thank you guys once again. Uh, I'm very grateful. Seriously, I'm very grateful. Um, and to the students, for your audience, to my family, for letting me stay late nights, tell my wife, we need to stay late nights to prepare these slides. Uh, the slides are not complete. I'll send, I'll complete it and send it out to uh, the president so that they can distribute it to, to you guys. I want you to have, be the first to have it. Right, uh, and I'll put it also on LinkedIn and, and, and we put the recording anywhere for people to, for posterity's sake. But thank you very much. Uh, I really sincerely appreciate it. All right, thank you so much. Uh, we really enjoyed this session. I, I really cannot thank you enough, uh, sir. And also, uh, because of the um, knowledge to the future that, that you have shared, I'm sure we would have um, some programs um, piggybacking off this um, session where we would um, dive into um, specific processes for uh, the geoscientists, uh, the petrophysicists, and also where we'll be diving into um, hydrogen gas as, as the future. Uh, thank you so much, sir. We have been inspired. And thank you, everyone, for joining. Uh, Peace. Sorry, you shared um, the events we'll be having next. Can you um, stay on that screen so we can? OK, so we'll be having um, soft skills development very soon. And we'll also be having a LinkedIn optimization workshop where uh, we would have uh, professionals come and tell us how to optimize our LinkedIn pages to uh, make sure that we are properly positioning ourselves to grab opportunities as they come or even before they come, right? So um, soft skills also would help us, you know. Uh, there's something I always hear, um, your certificates might get you the job or really your soft skills and your um, basically, and basically your soft skills really, um, aside other factors, uh, is, is, is an important um, thing to note that would keep your job. So uh, I think we should uh, learn all these things as we are learning in school as well, so we can properly position ourselves when we graduate and we can grab every opportunity that comes our way. Um, thank you everyone for joining. Uh, this would be the end of today's amazing session. Um, thank you very much. Uh, Angela Charles, if you could please drop your um, LinkedIn uh, 
uh, username in the chat box so people can connect with you. So that, that would be very helpful. I'm sure people would love to have discussions about uh, gas with you. So thank you very much, sir. And thank you, everyone. Okay, I'll, I'll do that. I'll do, I'll do that now. Um, don't end the meeting yet. Let me just drop that. Copy and paste. The, that's the way you do it. I can't remember. <laughs> okay. So yeah, please stay tuned for more uh, in the future. Yes, I'll call. We'll, I'll okay. we'll, we'll keep in touch, and we'll love to have you again, sir. Yeah. Thanks so much, sir. No mention. I've dropped it. Have you seen it? Yes, I've seen it. We've seen it, sir. All right. Take care. Bye, everyone. Bye, sir. Ah, uh, so everyone, uh, if you, yeah. So Ode Yemi Bolaji and um Ikechuku, please um kindly um send me a message to claim your gifts. I would also drop my LinkedIn um profile. You can send me a message on LinkedIn to. Uh, claim it if you do not have my WhatsApp number. Uh, you can send me a message. Uh, what about you?